Welcome to this week's ASX edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the ASX 200. I'm also going to have a look at the latest developments in gold, so make sure you stick around for that. I'm going to cover the S&P 500 in a separate video, and I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. As always, this is general commentary and doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So we've got the ASX 200 on the screen and it's been another week of, of positive price action. And so what we, what we have here, it's really strengthened its position above the, the moving averages. So I've got the, uh, the, the, the 50 and 100 day moving averages on the screen. And what we also see, these moving averages are now starting to turn upwards, which is a, a positive sign. And depending on what the price action does, it may only take another two or three weeks for these moving averages to cross. And when the moving averages cross, it's a sign of underlying positive momentum. So it's, it's an encouraging uh, setup for the, for the ASX 200. That said, I'm hesitant to buy into the index at, at current levels. I think the overall outlook continues to improve, but... Just looking at the setup, I think the near-term upside for the index at least may be limited. So there are a couple of things going on here. Firstly, we've got the, the extent by which the, the index has extended above the moving averages. When we get a situation where the index is below the moving averages, it rallies, crosses over, and, and flips to the, the top side of the averages, often we find there's a, a pullback towards the averages. And the averages work a little bit like gravity in that, in that respect. So I think that there is this, um, this possibility of getting this return move back towards the averages. And there's another thing going on with res resistance. There seems to be a resistance band around about the, the 7,200 mark, which is just below, just above the market. So I'm going to, um, going to sketch in where I think the, the resistance is. It's not a precise level with the way, way this works out, but what you see, you see that this, seven, this, this, this approximate band, it picks up a high point here, picks up some low points through here. Round about, there was activity around here, a little bit either side. Um, again, through here, here it overshoots a bit. It is a, is a bit of an active area, 7,200. So I think with the index approaching this point, also extended above the averages, it makes me think that there is a potential for the, for the index to pause. And so rather than buy, say, an ASX 200 ETF, my preference would be to look for stock-specific opportunities, stocks with the right setup, given the improving environment that we're seeing for the, for the ASX 200 generally. On the index front, if I were to look at an index which I was interested in, in getting more exposure to, It'd be this one here. This is the, um, the ASX Small Ordinaries. And what's interesting with this one is that this rebound off the September low continues to, to gain momentum. Price is now above the 100-day the moving average. So we have, um, have a positive sign there. Moving averages haven't yet turned higher. They haven't yet crossed. But it looks like that the 100-day um, the moving average and also the 50, they're starting to they're starting to, to, to flatten out, which is a first stage in, in turning upwards. I think the recovery potential in these smaller stocks is greater than in the larger stocks. We've also got this support area coming through here at around 2,780. Picks up a couple of highs here from back in, in July. Another high point, some activity in recent times. So if I were to Established a position in the, the small ordinaries. I actually do have a position in the small ordinaries, which I put on, put on uh, a couple of months back. If I were to add to it, it's an easy point to work out where my risk is. I could have a, have a stop loss just beneath this um, support band and upside, I'm looking for potentially a move towards this resistance band at around 3,100. So it shapes up as an interesting sort of setup in those, those smaller names. And it's been interesting because I've been seeing an increased number of buy signals for, for stocks with less familiar names turning up in my algorithmic scans, which I'm doing through my motion trader service. 
uh, stocks outside the, maybe at the lower end of the ASX 300 or even outside the ASX 300 or in some cases outside the All Ordinary. So I think there's some interesting uh, interesting movement in the individual stocks as well as being supported by a, a broadly pos- more positive uh, positioning in the in the in the indices generally. So um, look, if you if you're getting some value from this, please hit that that like button. Please leave a short comment. Just hey, thanks for the video. It just tells YouTube that people are watching the videos and people are engaging, and then YouTube shows more people, and that really helps what I do. So I, I make videos so people can watch and people can understand the setups and the possibilities I'm seeing. So please do that. It helps me so much. And also come over and visit me at motiontrader.com.au and see if anything that I do there might be able to help with what you're doing yourself. Now, um, let's move on from the indices. Let's move on to gold because gold has had an interesting week. So here's the, the daily chart of gold. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll be familiar with this support band through here to around 1680. Uh, so just going through the setup that I'm seeing. So this is interesting on a, on a, on a couple of fronts. So firstly, we had this, this breakdown in, in, in late September. The break didn't hold, market rallied back, had another attempt at breaking down in October. And again, there was no follow through selling. And now we've had a, a strong rally back above that this um, this uh, support point. So this is this is particularly interesting because it's a bullish sign when a market breaks below a support. On this occasion, it's broken down twice, and it can't attract follow through selling. Because what that indicates, it indicates that there is no more selling that really needs to be done, or there's um, or, or sellers have become resistant to selling, and the the selling the volume has really dried up on the on the downside. And when that happens, it can cause a market to, to bottom and then turn higher. And I've seen this sort of setup lead to, lead to many big rallies over the years. So it doesn't guarantee a big rally is going to eventuate from, from this situation, but it is positive. It's a positive sign to be aware of. The other feature, which I want to focus in on, is this descending trend channel, which the market has just broken out from. So let me just quickly skip to a four hourly chart, just get, get a little bit more detail in this channel. Now the channel dates back to uh, back, dates back to March, clearly defined downward trend channel. We've got, we've got a number of touch points on the, on the top side. You can say there's four touch points on the top side, so it makes it well established and, and, a, and a channel of, of significance. And we've got this breakout, which has just happened during the week. Now, when you get a breakout from these trend channels or any sort of charting pattern for that instance, when you, when you get a breakout, you often get a return move. So you'll have the initial thrust higher, then the market will pause and it will consolidate above the breakout point. Sometimes it might, might come back close to the breakout point, otherwise, other times it just might be sideways. So that's something to bear in mind that this, um, yes, we've had a, a good strong move, it's, it's definitely a positive development. It's making the, the technical outlook for gold look a lot better than it was a few weeks ago. But let's just go back to the daily. But having, having said that, it doesn't mean we should immediately expect that this is just going to launch up towards, towards those previous highs. It could still be part of a, of a larger, larger basing pattern, which may still require a bit of time to, to play out. Like I'm also aware, looking at these moving averages, the moving averages haven't turned high yet. They're starting to flatten and they're maybe staying around, but they've got a bit more work before they can actually really turn higher and then cross over. Here we can see that 50-day get up above the 100-day above the moving average. Going to take a bit more time. So that's why I say this could be more of a, a larger bottoming process, which needs to, to work through. But the technical picture is definitely improving. And it also plays out when I look at other metals, like looking at silver, for instance. We can see we can see a nice rounding basing formation taking place in silver after a, um, a, a quite a weak period of price action. So that's positive. Go over to copper. See something similar. See the market. The market in copper hit a low in July. We had an initial rally, and for the last few months we've just been tracking sideways. Again, this is a bit of a rounding sort of basing pattern there. 
We've punched higher over the last, last week or two. Above those moving averages, moving averages appear to be turning. Really interesting space to watch. Also coincides with the US dollar pulling back over the last, last few days. So really interest, re, re, interesting space to watch in these, these metals. And uh, it's also interesting that I've been getting a number of buy signals for gold stocks over the last week or two in my motion trader service. So the, the algorithms are picking up in the emerging momentum that, that has been playing out in the, in the gold sector. So I'll just give you one quick example. So this is a stock which turned up in the signals at the start of the week. So a company called Gold Road Resources. So one of the interesting things is you know, I'm not just, just spotting the, um, the larger companies. There's also these second and third tier, tier names which get turned up in the, uh, in the scans. So just compress this up a little bit. Gold Road had been in a big uptrend for, for some time leading into the, um, the, the high in um, mid-2020 um, mid, mid this was, July 2020 the peak was. So you can see how long these consolidations can last after a big upward trend. You know, people hope upward trends are just going to keep going and going and going, but they often, they usually don't. They usually pause for these sometimes multi-year consolidations. So where we have it now, we've um, uh, it bottomed in July, July of this year, had an initial rally, then went through a sideways process, and that gave those moving averages time to stabilize and start to turn higher. We got the cross last uh, early this week. The moving average crossed and turned upwards. So the 50 day got above the 100 day, showing that underlying momentum. And then we got a breakout at the start of the week. This is where I got a buy signal. Now, this, this market has continued to, to move higher over the last few days. It's now up here. It's now actually approaching the upper band of this, this broader, this broader uh, trading range. So from my perspective, I wouldn't, I, I'm, I wouldn't buy Gold Road just here now. I would have bought it on the breakout. But now it's, it's run a little bit, stretched quite a bit above those moving averages. So it's an example of the sort of setups which are appearing and the sort of potential this gold sector has doesn't mean everything has to be bought on day one. We could get, like I was talking earlier about the potential for, for gold pausing and consolidating that breakout that we've just seen from that, um, that trend channel. If gold road was to pause, maybe we could get a, another, like a, a zigzag back towards the, the breakout point. And then from there, we start to see more momentum. And then that could take us out of this range. And, to, and that's how you can lead into the next large upswing in the gold sector. So really interesting, interesting things, um, interesting things starting to happen in this gold, gold space. This is just one scenario. It's a case of watching the price action, but the price action that I'm seeing across the gold sector is really starting to get, get interesting. And um, yeah, it's, um, keep a close eye. I think there, it's, um, I think in these situations, it's also important to remember to be, be patient. Whilst I say there's interesting setups, it, um, it doesn't all happen on day one. And Gold Road is just, and Gold Road is just, just one of, of, of a number of stocks which are, which are showing that positive price action. So hopefully that's been interesting. Look forward to coming back next week and, and going through that price action again. So until then, thanks for joining me and bye for now.